Hello, sweeties potatoes. Welcome back. A friend sent this to me last night, and it couldn't have been more timely as I've been procrastinating like mad. I heard this from a coworker. You're not working from home. You're at home during a crisis, trying to work. This is important to realize, as even I'm struggling and have been working from home for years. 60% effort may be all you can muster. Some days I'm at 80%, and others I'm at two. Whether you've been thriving at home or have turned full potato mode, know that so long as you're trying your best, any percent is more than enough in such uncertain times. Although there are many things that are outside of our control when it comes to navigating this new normal, there are a few things we can control. And today, I'd like to talk about those few things. Here are seven tips for staying healthy and productive while working and studying from home. Before we can get to the working and the productiving, there's one thing we need to do. Check your mental state because if that is unstable, your work will be too. Name your feelings. Becky. Sit with your feelings. Take your feelings out for a walk in your apartment. Be present with it as if it were your one true love. Embrace it, accept it for who and what it is because you love it and this is what it means to love. In all seriousness, David Kessler, co-author of On Grief and Grieving, introduced to the world the five stages of grief. In an interview with Harvard Business Review, he said, There's something powerful about naming it as grief. It helps us feel what's inside of us. So many have told me in the past week, I'm telling my coworkers I'm having a hard time, or I cried last night. When you name it, you feel it, and it moves through you. Emotions need motion. It's important we acknowledge what we go through. One unfortunate byproduct of the self-help movement is that we're the first generation to have feelings about our feelings. We tell ourselves things like, I feel sad, but I shouldn't feel that. Other people have it worse. We can, we should, stop at the first feeling. I feel sad. Let me go for five minutes to feel sad. Your work is to feel your sadness and fear and anger whether or not someone else is feeling something. Allow yourself to feel what you feel. If you've been procrastinating as I have, take it as a sign to slow down and look inward to figure out why and what you're really procrastinating. Be honest and more importantly, be gentle with yourself. Whether you're going through the five stages of grief in order or out of order or backwards or forwards or whichever words, remember that this is all temporary, our feelings included and that acceptance is waiting for all of us right around the corner. Now that we're spending 99.7 of our days indoors, it can be mighty tempting to stay in bed just a little longer, take 13 naps throughout the day, and throw our pre-quarantine routine out the window. But it is exactly in times like this where we should revisit and readjust our routines, try new things, and ultimately stick with what works best for us. Take some time to think through your ideal morning. How would you like to spend these first precious 30 minutes of your day? What is the one thing you can rely on to help put you in a calm and peaceful state? I still make my bed and brush my teeth every morning, but I haven't been washing my face as consistently as before, which I found it's actually imperative in my morning routine, especially now that we're home all day. To me, washing my face is like crossing that threshold between half awake dream state and reality, like really being up. If I don't wash my face for the whole day, I just feel groggy as if I never fully woke up. It's like how people change into real clothes and wear pants to feel more human. This is exactly how washing my face makes me feel. I also started waking up by 7.30 to join our Beauty Within team for morning reading and sharing till 9 a.m. Then I make a quick breakfast. I've been making a lot of grilled cheese and loaded yogurts. In here, I added chia, hemp, flaxseed, as well as some maple syrup and strawberries. These strawberries love you, just like how I love you. Okay, anyway, remember your routine is your routine. It can be as simple as washing your face, changing out of your PJs, and drinking water or as eventful as meditating, writing morning pages, reading, and making breakfast. Do you, boo-boo, always.
I feel like my days have been blowing by with doing two things before it's way past my bedtime and I need to go back to bed and wake up the next day to only be able to do two more things. So I've been writing out my schedule every day, hour by hour, and throughout the day, I'd update what I actually did in detail to keep track of how I've been spending my time. Every night, I review how the day went and do a quick energy audit. For every task that I perform, did it give me energy or did it drain my energy? This is from the book, The Great CEO Within. The goal of auditing my schedule and energy is to keep myself accountable. The benefit of this is that it'll help you get into a working mindset when the time comes to be more focused and efficient and have some sort of work-life home-home balance. This also helps create structure and boundaries for you to include a start and end time for work and not blur home life and work life and schedule in meals, virtual social hangouts, and downtime so that you're not working for hours on end. Balance is timing, not intensity. It's not doing multiple tasks at 80%, but developing the skill of turning it on and turning it off. Sleep fully, then work intensely. Focus deeply, then relax completely. Give each phase your full attention. Balance is when to, not how to. Having worked from home on and off for over five years, I found creating a designated corner for work or study to be the most important aspect of working from home. If possible, try to work at a table with a comfortable chair that offers plenty of support, somewhere with enough electrical outlets, adequate light, and ample space to spread out all your thoughts and feelings. Even if you have limited space, get creative. A little corner is really all you need to mentally zone your space into work zone and work free zone. Here are three things to keep in mind to achieve optimal workspace magic. Number one, pick a corner that is designated solely for working purposes only. This will help you be far more productive by allowing you to enter a mental state of I'm here to be serious and get down to business and work. Be vigilant with your corner. Here's a rule I set for myself. Corner is for working, couch is for relaxing and non-related work things, bed and bedroom is for sleeping, no excuses. Set boundaries for yourself like your sanity depends on it because it does. Number two, keep it tidy. Clean and clear space equals clean and clear mind. A clean space also reduces distraction. According to a 2011 Princeton University study, working in a cluttered workspace is similar to trying to multitask. When you see multiple stimuli at one time, they all compete for your attention, making it more difficult to deeply focus on any one thing. And deep focus Focus is what we all strive for in these very scattered times, right? Yes. Number three, have ergonomics and posture in mind. Your wrists, shoulders, neck, head, as well as your back. The top of your monitor should be just below eye level so you don't strain your neck to read. Prop your laptop up with a stack of books or a shoebox if it is not the ideal height. When you type, your arms should be bent at a 90 degree angle. And also avoid bending your wrists upwards. I invested in a mouse pad primarily to protect my table. That was quite the investment. And secondarily for my wrist. We're either going to come out of this stay-at-home order looking like a snack or wishing we didn't snack as much. Stick to regular meal times. This helps so you don't skip meals or overeat. I haven't been the best at this, but I'm trying really hard. I've mostly been eating only when I get hungry, which also works, but I should still be more structured with eating at consistent times every day. Schedule water breaks, fill up a large container of water in the morning that you keep drinking and refilling throughout the day. This also helps you get up to use the restroom so that you can walk maybe 200 steps a day instead of two. <laughs> and also be mindful of snacking. Don't constrain yourself, but also don't overindulge. Snack in moderation. It's very tempting to open your kitchen cabinet full of snacks, especially when you're trying to procrastinate from work. Just be aware of this or don't buy unhealthy snacks in the first place so you aren't tempted. Take advantage of staying home and use your kitchen to cook healthier meals and also set up your environment for success. Remove any bad triggers like leaving chips or cookies out on the table or in a place where you can easily see. There's a reason why I stick all my sweets way up high in the pantry. Back to balance. Use exercise to speed up and mindfulness to slow down. 
Put some form of exercise on your to-do list every day if you can. It's easy to fall into the trap of staying indoors all day, so get up, move around, and step outside just to get a few breaths of fresh air if you have a backyard, or if you can manage to just step outside for a second, or at the very least, open your windows to get some fresh, fresh air. Home workouts, there's a number of free workouts online here on YouTube that are geared for all fitness levels and don't need any equipment. Shop around and find the one that fits your style and pace. An app that I've been using is Obey. They have a free seven day trial. I've taken Pilates, flow, and high intense interval training, which was amazing. I was so sweaty by the end of the 28 minutes. Other apps are Nike Training Club, Peloton, ClassPass. It's tempting to sit on your computer all day and lose track of time, but just get up and move around Around, have a dance party by yourself or with your significant other or your roommate or your family or your parents during your scheduled breaks you can get up and do laundry take out the trash fold your clothes organize a cabinet or a drawer clean vacuum set a timer for 20 minutes so you don't get consumed in whatever you're doing remember the goal is for you to get up and move around this will help keep you healthier and give you more energy which will help you when you sit back down to work as for slowing down take breaths look outside the window, watch the cloud pass, meditate, journal, write out your feelings, sit with your feelings, be your feelings, and gracefully let go of your feelings if they're holding you down more than lifting you up. Focus on what you can control and let go of what you cannot. Last, I saw this tweet from Naval Ravikant, an investor and entrepreneur who was my favorite guest on Tim Ferriss's podcast, and it really made me think. Schools aren't about learning, offices aren't about working, churches aren't about praying, restaurants aren't about eating. There are many ways to interpret this. On the surface, they're all about socializing and we're all social beings. Living a balanced life and tending to all areas of our lives, be it mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and social will help us do better work. So call your loved ones and schedule virtual hangouts with friends, families, coworkers. I'll include a Google Doc below in my description box of all the online games under the sun. This has been so clutch for virtual hangs and game nights. All right, so all of that is very cute, but back to the quote. If you unpack it a little more, it's like a structured set of activities and experiences we've been sold our whole lives as being essential and necessary. They all give us some type of external validation, but why do these activities exist to begin with and who set the structure? Are they meant to keep us busy? And if so, from what? I'll just leave it as this for now. The essence of philosophy is that a man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. Take this time to go inward and work on the most important relationship you'll ever have, which is with yourself. For as introverted as I am and as much as I can be self-sufficient for the whole duration of this quarantine, there really is no need to go to extremes. Relationships are important. Call your parents and friends and set up weekly virtual hangs. Be balanced, be like water, walk the middle path, and walk it well. I'm gonna leave this snippet of the article here for you guys to read if you guys do want to read it. I'll also link it down below. Hit spacebar or pause to read fully. But I'm just going to go on because I feel like reading this, you guys are all capable of reading yourselves. <laughs> With all of that, be kind to yourself, listen to your body, and give it what it needs, be it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and or socially. Do whatever it is you need to heal and stay balanced and healthy during this time, whether it's journaling, meditating, binging a show, Korean dramas, something creative like painting or drawing, whatever helps you heal, do it. Quoting High School Musical, we're all in this together, experiencing the impact together. So remember, you're not alone. We're not alone. We're all here for each other, potato fam. I love you guys. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. I really wish every single one of you are doing as best as you can and that you're all staying healthy, safe, and sane in these very wild times that we're in. Voice hug. Love you guys. I will see you guys next week. Next week. Okay. <laughs> Bye.